Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for this session. Um, we're very excited to have you all here today. Legacy International is pleased to partner with the Center for the Enhancement of Engineering Diversity at Virginia Tech for the Tech Girls Program. SEED accesses a wide variety of resources from across the Virginia Tech community to provide a customized tech camp and college and career readiness program. SEED supports women and other students from underrepresented populations to excel in STEM at Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech is ranked 25th among public institutions, 69th for universities nationwide, and the world's best in 21 STEM subjects, according to US News Report. Today, we are grateful to have Alyssa Rometta, an Assistant Director at Career and Professional Development, to address us about preparing for an interview. She joined the center in July 2018 as a career advisor for the graduate school. She is also the liaison to the Cranwell International Center and a certified federal career advisor. Alyssa enjoys coaching graduate students across all campuses and colleges and offering guidance on any topic related to career and professional development. Prior to joining Hokie Nation, Alyssa worked in career services at Northeastern University, Boston College, and the University of Connecticut. We are happy to welcome her here today. If you will have any questions during her presentation, feel free to drop them in the chat. Thank you. Thank you, Brittany. I appreciate the, the warm welcome on a Saturday morning. Uh, welcome everybody. And uh, I'm really excited to meet you all today and chat and help you prepare for any future interviews that you have. So I'm going to share my screen and kick us off. I change my colors instead of the typical hokey colors of maroon and orange. I change it to be green for spring and all the excitement um, um, outside lately. It's been really beautiful. So as, as Brittany mentioned, my name is Alyssa Rometta and I work at Career and Professional Development uh, at Virginia Tech's Career Center. And I do work with every college. Of course, some of the most common students are my engineers um, and STEM, other, other related STEM fields. I mainly work with current graduate students, but also have a history of working with undergraduates um, in their career and professional development. Today though, is gonna be focusing specifically on interviewing skills, and I do encourage everybody to please um, unmute if you are able or throw a question in the chat throughout. I may also be throwing questions at you throughout the presentation. So I hope that this will be a two-way conversation um, to be as an engaging and as resourceful as possible. So even if some of the questions that you might ask during the workshop steer us away from the you know, prepared PowerPoint slides, I'm happy for that. I just want this to be as resourceful as possible for you all in the next 45 minutes. So um, a few topics for today, just quick introductions. We're going to talk about different interview formats because there's not just one way an interview may happen for you. Um, how to prepare, some common questions we'll work through. How to prepare for a virtual interview instead of in person. Um, virtual interviewing was here before the pandemic, of course, really increased during the pandemic, of course, um, but it's really not going anywhere. Um, it's much simpler um, and more budget friendly for employers and for graduate programs and undergraduate um, admissions to always have virtual interviewing options. So preparing for that. Um, and what to do post interview. So after your interview, what next steps should you be doing to enhance your probability for admission or for acceptance for a job? All right, so has anybody here in the room had an interview before that maybe could speak about the process? Um, any initial things of what type was it? You know, was this a phone interview, a Zoom interview? Um, and I'll leave it first for the students in the room and then for um, the professionals in the room, if you wanna pipe in as well, just what type of interviewing experience have you had so far? Have you maybe already interviewed for an internship? And you can put it in the chat, just general information of, yes, I've had an interview or I've had, uh, hi. Sorry, hello. Hi, uh, I'm Amina and I'm, a from Tech Girls to 2013. I'm currently a student and I am doing my internship this semester. And so I, I had an interview and it was uh, online because it's because of the pandemic, sure. everything, every interview, yeah. I think it's, it's online. 
And yeah, I, I got asked so many questions about me, about my, the projects that I did, the other professional experiences that I had. And mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, I would say also that I had a lot of interviews. Um, yeah. Okay, great. What was the virtual interview like? Do you mind me asking? And I'm sure other girls in the room are curious. What, what was that experience like for you? How was it any different? Um, I, I was nervous, um, of course, and um, I just try, there are questions that I already prepared because there are questions that are always asked and there are also questions where I had to improvise mm -hmm. and um, yeah, it's, I mean, I think it, it, it went good and um, yeah. Great, so are you doing that internship this summer? Yes, I, I'm doing it currently. Oh, congrats. So you really <laughs> did you. well in the interview, right? Yes. Some success there. That's great. Thank awesome. You so. ha, thank you so much for sharing. Has anybody else had an interview recently that you would want to chat about? I saw one person unmuted. You can just continue to unmute and, and share if you would like. I always find it's most helpful for folks to be learning from each other um, rather than just hearing my voice for 45 minutes because um, I could certainly talk about interviewing for hours, um, but hearing it from others is always great too. So thank you so much, Amina, for sharing that um, and congrats on the internship. That's really exciting. I may call on you a few times of um, some of your other experiences throughout. So others who have had interviews, feel free to, to share. All right. So there are a variety of types of interviews. So I'm going to talk through um, a few different types and then um, some formats as well. So on the left side here, we have some common types of interviews. We have a traditional interview, which um, maybe some of the questions that she got of, there's some pretty traditional questions. Tell me about yourself. What are your strengths and weaknesses? Um, what are, why are you interested in this role? versus a behavioral interview. Does anybody know what a behavioral interview is? And you can put it in the chat. Or actually for these last three, behavioral, case, and technical. Has anybody heard of those three? Oh, yeah. Hi, good morning. I heard, uh, hi, I'm, I'm Hazada from Kyrgyzstan. I'm Great. the girl 2020, yes, no, 2020. Great to see you, yeah. I, but I'm high school, so I, I guess I had interview. Yeah, I had interview when I was like applying to the high school. Oh, okay. And okay, but I was like talking. I was like going to talk about the behavioral interview. It's fine. Uh huh. Great. Thank you so um, much for. It, Go ahead. As I know, it's like uh, when programmers are applying, they should show their skills, right? Or it's technical. That's a little bit more of the technical one. So that's great. Um, the technical interview is more of what you girls are going to be preparing for. Um, there's anything involving coding or having really highly technical questions asked. Um, so more scientific or um, engineering specific questions. So think technical, truly just exactly that word, more technical based questions. Yeah. Um, thank you so much. Does anybody know what a behavioral interview question is? Okay, that's why we're all here to learn. So a behavioral interview question um, is usually going to start with something like, tell me about a time when blank. Give me an example where blank. Where they're trying to hear a specific situation that you were in in the past to indicate how you behaved, how did you respond, what action steps did you take? And we'll break down a couple of those questions as well because behavioral interviewing is very, very common and weaved into almost every single interview. Sometimes there is an interview that is purely just behavioral. Um, oftentimes in the United States, there is multiple rounds of interviews. Um, so it could be that your intro interview or called a screening interview, maybe with just the hiring manager, it's gonna be pretty traditional questions. Round two might be purely behavioral and with maybe a team of folks. And then maybe round three is more technical and with who would just be your supervisor. So not HR, not a screening interview. 
case interviewing, I wanted to bring this up because it is a, a common type of interview, um, but really only for consulting. And I know we're all in tech here, um, but there could be a future where you are interested in tech consulting, right? Um, so case interviewing is very unique and different. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on it because it is kind of a beast on its own. Um, but it's usually a longer question, like 20 minutes of a response for one question. And that one question is um, usually pretty um, problem-based. So maybe solving a problem, a consulting problem for the business you're interviewing for. And you're basically working through that question out loud. So talking out loud throughout your thought process of getting, getting through the answer and not necessarily a perfect response of, $2,000, like a specific response. It's more of the process of how you got there so they can understand how your brain works. So it's a very different type of interview is case interviewing. But these are the most common types of interviews. Versus on the right side here, we have interview formats. So we already heard verbally, somebody said I had a virtual interview, right? Well, virtual can kind of go two different ways. There's a video interview. So it'd be like on Zoom, maybe Brittany's on the other line and then I'm here as the candidate, right? It's a two way live interview. The next one is a little scary of a virtual one-way interview. And these are unfortunately becoming more and more common and not too fun to go through, but you won't do it alone, I promise, <laughs> that um, it is a one-way recorded interview. It is most often for a screening interview, so that's that first round, where they're going to have a system, kind of like a Zoom, where it has maybe a few questions, no more than five or six questions, prepared that it'll automatically ask you and record yourself and it'll record you responding to them. Sometimes there's a little fake person in the background and sometimes it's just watching yourself recording. Um, so if you have any questions about that process, I can always answer and give some tips there. There's also a phone interview. So that's pretty common. It's a phone call. Um, one big tip I have for that is that when the employer were to call you, so say if Brittany were to call me at 10 a.m. for my interview, when you see that call coming in, I do recommend you pick up, hi, this is Alyssa, or good morning, this is Alyssa. Really simple way to just right off the bat, make sure that you're on the right call, right? And it's just professional, nice greeting. Then a group interview, um, that's where there's multiple candidates. So this may happen for admission for college. Um, I'm not sure if anybody has had to go through a group interview that can maybe speak on it. You can put in the chat um, to, to not interrupt um, if you had a group interview. Um, I have had to do this before. Often if you are interviewing for a position on campus like a resident advisor, so being an RA for a dorm, Often those are in a group interview and it's a different type of interview because they're asking maybe one question and going through each candidate in a line um, or they're trying to see maybe a group activity and seeing how your teamwork skills and interpersonal skills um, show in an interview. So they're quite common. And then lastly is a panel. So that's reverse where there's one candidate but multiple interviewers. This is the majority of my interviewing experience where there's usually a committee that is reviewing candidates. And it's not too intimidating. You're just trying to have a conversation with lots of different people at the same time, engaging with eye contact with each person as you're, as you're answering their question. Um, and it's really just everybody trying to get to know you at, at once. So these are a couple of different types of interviews that I want you to be aware of, of just introducing you to the world of interviewing, especially if you haven't had an interview before. It could be a little overwhelming or unknown of what does this actually look like? And it looks very different for different organizations and maybe for admissions versus an internship versus a full-time job. So again, as you have any questions, and especially for folks who are just kind of popping in, if you have any questions about what I'm referring to or need me to slow down or go back a slide, just put in the chat or unmute. I welcome interruptions. All right. So moving forward, um, thinking, let's brainstorm for a minute. When we're thinking about an interview, Often people are asking, well, how should I prepare? What should I say? What content should I respond with, right? What, um, I know one person that was mentioned, that was talking earlier said, I had some questions prepared or the answers prepared. And then others, I had to think improv, on the spot, on the fly, thinking of an answer. Consider for a moment here, what would the interviewer want to know throughout maybe you have a 30 minute conversation with a recruiter for a college or for an internship? What do you think they want to know? What, what's their goal for those 30 minutes of meeting you for the first time? And you can unmute or put in the chat. Kind of putting yourself in the interviewer's shoes. 
Um, hello, Hi. can I share? Good morning, yes, please, welcome it. Okay, so I'm Yusra from Algeria. Nice to meet you. Okay, so uh, I think if uh, the, in the interviewer wants to know more about like um, the skills he they want, um, for example, if it was a scholarship, they want to know uh, more about the skills uh, they need in this uh, scholarship. Like if it was an exchange program, mm -hmm. um, they want to know if you are a leader, if you have like uh, confidence, if you are responsible. So it's more based on uh, what you're uh, applying for. This is what I think. Yeah, that's exactly it. It's really going to be based on what you're applying for. And I'm so glad you brought that up because the number one way to be preparing for an interview is not necessarily Google searching how to prepare for an interview or what are the 50 most common questions that you should be prepared for and memorizing answers to those common 50 interview questions. The best way to prepare for an interview is exactly what she just mentioned really tailored on the job or whatever you're applying for. So that means the job posting, that's your study guide. Or for um, college admissions, your study guide to prepare for that interview is gonna be their department website, understanding the college, looking at your essays again for like all the materials you use to apply, refer to that because that's what they're probably gonna ask you questions about, right? Getting to know you, your interests, so we'll talk through some of those really effective ways to be preparing for an interview. But as she said, it's so dependent on what you're applying to. So thinking beyond those qualifications, also thinking about fit, especially when we're thinking about um, colleges, right? And full-time jobs, not too, too much with internships, but more thinking about you're either gonna be here for four years plus sometimes. Um, and for full-time jobs, you're going to be working with this team for 40 hours a week. We want to make sure that not only can you do the job, but do you want to do it here with us, with our team, our dynamics, our culture, right, our mission? So that's really important to think about fit. And it, with that, um, that can really shine through when you are confident, you are prepared, you know a lot about the organization or about the college or about the company, that you can speak to it and not just regurgitate facts, but thinking about really reflecting why you're interested in that, right? My response for why I'm interested in working as a career advisor at Virginia Tech should be wildly different than my same question, but at say VCU, right? It should really be tailored based on where I'm gonna be doing this work as a computer engineer, computer scientist. Your work is gonna look different at Dell compared to Microsoft having an understanding and being able to verbally communicate with enthusiasm, genuine enthusiasm, why you're a good fit for that organization is gonna be important and being able to share that. That's what the employer really wants to know on the other side of that interview. So thinking before the interview, imagine that you get a phone call right now saying, we have an interview, we'd love to interview for your dream internship. It'll be scheduled for next Friday morning at 10 a.m. What are you going to do between now and that interview? And you can put it in the chat. You can unmute, kind of name off some things, steps. What are you going to do between now and next Friday to prepare for your dream interview? Uh, for example, uh, I would say uh, you need to read, like, really uh, what are they um, requiring and then uh, think about an example of wh when did you apply for example that skill or uh, yeah how did you yeah. what le program what project did you did with this programming lang uh, language for example or something like that mm -hmm. that's great good that's perfect i love that you said examples brainstorm and remember try to recall examples of times that you've used these skills. And for a job or an internship, they tell you the skills they're looking for. That's in the job posting, right? In my application, it's very clearly written out what the qualifications and skills are that they're looking for. They're gonna ask about those, right? In the interview to see how have you done public speaking, right? Tell me the good, the bad, the ugly. What are examples of that? Because something like say public speaking, 
you can't just say you have public speaking skills. That doesn't have much weight, right? It's through an example. A career advisor told me once when I was in college um, and I was going to one before becoming one, said in an interview, show them how you have that skill. Don't just tell them. And I really like that because that's exactly what you had said is show them you have blank skill or qualification. You show them that through a story, through an example. So we'll talk through how to actually say a story in an interview too. Um, and we have one person in the chat said research. Good. Research what? Because a lot of folks say research the company, research before an interview. Let's break that down. What do you actually research? And feel free to unmute if you're able to. Zara. Okay. Um, research about the company. I mean, their values. Their, yeah, I think values the most important because you should like fit in that. Yeah. Yeah. We were talking about that company fit, right? Well, you need to know more about the company besides just um, basic information, right? Like I said, you don't need to regurgitate facts. You don't need to remember the date um, that the company was founded, right? They're not going to want that or not. They're going to quiz you on that. Um, and if they do quiz you on that, maybe that's not a company you want to work for, right? <laughs> I always tell that with students, if you have a bad feeling during an interview and you're like, I don't really like the way that they were talking to me or the way they were aggressively asking questions or whatever, you, you know, an interview is a two-way street. It's a two-way decision. They're thinking about fit for you, but also that's going to be 40 hours a week for you or for you, four years of university. You want to make sure you're at a good fit in a place where you're respected and appreciated and all that. But that was a little side tangent, but yes, exactly. Researching the company. So we'll talk through specifics of how to do that. We talked a little bit about um, relating yourself to the mission or the values, right? For the institution. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Um, so I know this one tip when you research about the, their website and where they were like found and all this stuff, like small details, and you feel just like, um, what is like, oh, you should just add in your interview when you were interviewing with these people and they will actually know that you like did research in their yes. website. <laughs> I love that. That's so important. Yeah. Um, have you been able to do that in an interview before? No, not yet. Okay, not yet, but you know, right? So now me in the future, yes. you know. And it's really important that you can show them through your conversation. It's very obvious as an interviewer, if the candidate did some research about the company before stepping into this interview, right? Again, it's not regurgitating facts, but it's weaving that information into your answers right? Even asking good questions at the end of an interview that show that you're informed about what they do. What are their mission? What's their goal? Um, sometimes in an interview, they'll even ask you, you know, first question is often tell me about yourself. But the second one often is, what do you know about our company? What does our company do? Right? That's very common. Absolutely. Um, so being prepared for that, especially if you're working for a company, I can share a story. My sister interviewed um, with Google. And one of the first questions they asked her is, what does Google do? Everybody in the world knows what Google is, right? She had to demonstrate she knows more than just it's a search engine, right? Um, more than just somebody off the street. If I were to ask right now, what is Google, right? If you're preparing for an interview with that company, you need to know more than that. Absolutely, right? More than just the common information. Knowing research about truly what do they do? It, Google is huge and they have lots of different divisions and missions and values and goals. You know, do they have strategic plans? Um, what are they in the news for recently? Have they gotten a recent grant? Blah, 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 stuff like that. So I always like to say that for Google because everybody knows Google, but for an interview, you gotta know more than just the common, common person. Good. This is great. You guys are all brainstorming. So here are a few additional pieces. So first thing that was mentioned was research, right? Researching the employer about company, culture, the university, what programs are you interested in, but as a whole as well, and faculty. So who are the professors? You know, what are their interests, especially if you're applying to graduate school instead of undergraduate? For a job and internship, that's the job posting. You should be researching and kind of studying the job posting. Huge piece of advice for anybody applying to a job or internship, including the adults in the room too, that when you are applying to a job, it is so important. Most often you're gonna be applying online, right? 
there's a posting online, whatever website this is, even the employer website, you see the ad online and then you apply directly online, right? Download the job description. Download that as a PDF. Why would I say that? Save that description. What happens? Why would you want to save that? So often it's taken offline once they start interviewing for the position. Sometimes even before they start interviewing, if it closes on a certain day, sometimes they don't even tell you when it's gonna close and they just take it offline. That's your study guide for an interview. It's really important you have that. So what I recommend doing is if it's online, I'll click the little print icon where I'm gonna print the document, but I don't print it. And instead there's an option instead of printing that you can save as a PDF and they'll save the entire web page as a PDF. And then I put it in a folder in Google Drive, not on the computer, because I don't trust computers. I save it in the, the cloud in Google Drive and I label each folder by the university or the company you're gonna apply for. And then save that job description as a PDF. I also recommend you copy and paste it and put it in a Google document. And then you can be brainstorming, interviewing and taking notes and all that and highlighting and bolding and remembering stories for a particular skill. Use the comment section, make it an interactive Google document. But I also like to just save it perfect as is as a PDF. So you remember all of that. Sometimes too, for internships and jobs, they have a salary range posted in the job announcement. That's also helpful for when you're getting to an offer stage and you want to negotiate the offer. It's also gonna be helpful to have the full description when you are negotiating, even if it doesn't say anything about salary in it, because if you can go through and remember and see the evidence of the job announcement and say, kind of check off, I meet all of the required qualifications and 75% or more of the um, preferred qualifications or that it would be nice if you also had this. If you can say as the candidate, I have X, Y, and Z in addition to the basic requirements, you have room to negotiate and you should negotiate. Um, maybe for next year for this conference, we can have one on how um, young women can gain negotiation skills because that is certainly one um, that I work with and coach a lot of my female students, female scientists students on how to negotiate a job offer. Uh, okay, reviewing and reflecting your resume, your documents, you know, if you're applying to college, review your essays again, um, and then reflecting on your yourself and really your interests as well and your qualifications. Next year, we're going to have preparing. So preparing what you're going to wear, what you're going to ask them. So at the end of an interview, there is always room for you to be asking them questions. Always, always, always ask questions for them. What are you going to bring? So if it's in person, are you going to bring a pad full of copies of your resume? Bring multiple copies of your resume. Are you going to bring examples of your work if they're asking for that? Um, how to get there, right? Do you have to take the train, metro, driving? What's the parking situation? Understanding all of that. If you can do a dry run of that before, so that's doing like a practice drive, um, train and whatnot. When you are arriving, you want to actually arrive physically in that building, checking in for the interview 10 to 15 minutes before the interview starts. No earlier, no later. Virtual, I would recommend five minutes before you're in that Zoom room waiting. Okay. And then preparing technology in your background, right? I have my background blurred right now because I'm also not in my, in my usual office, right? Um, and understanding professional background and all of those. Knowing yourself before an interview is gonna be the most important. You can have you know, the job description here and you're really well prepared for a lot of your technical information, but I want you to be self-aware as well. We talked about preparing stories and examples, having a bank of stories. Right? So that's kind of like a little vault, different answers and stories about yourself. Remember showing them how you have qualifications, not just telling them. Matching yourself, aligning yourself with the company and the job description. And a very common interview question. This is the one you can almost guarantee, I can bet money on. This is going to be asked in every single interview. It's the only question. There's two questions I will always be asked in an interview, most likely. Tell me about yourself. And then at the very, very end, what questions do you have for us? So tell me about yourself. Brainstorm this really quickly. What are you supposed to say in that? That's such a vague question. 
for the folks in the room who have interviewed before, what do you normally say in this answer? What are some components to it? Um, well, for me, I, I don't know if it's right or wrong, but I do it this way. I, okay. I say my name and uh, my age and what I do, where I study. And I always try also to, to say what I, what I like to do or what I am passionate about. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's usually something related to that job. And I try sort of try to say something that distinguishes me for example if i speak many languages or if i have a special skill but like really briefly in a sentence that's great i love that especially what makes you unique right off the bat starting with something like that thank you so much amina for sharing that um and i like how you also said sharing stuff about yourself but as it relates to the job right I don't need to know you also love Disney World or that you enjoy hiking um, or that you do yoga as a hobby. That's great information. Not really something you're going to share in your first tell me about yourself. In my opinion, tell me about yourself translates in my brain when I'm the interviewer, interviewee. I would translate that to tell me about yourself as it relates to this position of why we're talking today. Tell me about yourself why we're talking today. So that means all about that job, that opportunity, right? So your answer should be a little summary about yourself, exactly what Amina said. Some of your key skills and accomplishments, things you're really proud of that make you stand out, right? Experiences do that. You know, your name, what you're studying, where, where did you go to university? And then a little slice of why you're here today, why you're interested. So maybe I'm talking about my history, my past, and then say, so I'm really excited about this internship interview. Thank you again for the opportunity. I'm really excited to hear more about the opportunity and also share more of some of my experiences um, that, that I think really prepared me for this and share, um, share my interest in working for this company. That really helps to transition it too. That way you're not just ending abruptly of, here's everything about myself, you know. On average length, this is a common question I get of how long should I talk about myself? This is an introduction, right? It's the first question. You would probably answer a minute, minute and a half. I wouldn't go more than two minutes for this answer. So really a summary. This is one I want you to prepare for. Practice out loud, time yourself. I write down in my notes, bullets. So quick bullets, like a little list of you know name, what I'm studying, what I'm doing, maybe one or two skills that I'm really proud of that again, relate to this position. And then quick, like one sentence, why I'm interested in this role. I wouldn't prepare and memorize a script. I would remember a few key notes and that helps. It's a really important question too, because it's your introduction, which also means it's your first impression. And this is the most commonly asked question. So if you're not prepared to answer this, you likely didn't prepare much for the interview, right? So it's really an important tone to start off with. And this can really show your enthusiasm, right? Show your personality, show your passion for whatever your tech is. During the interview, so some tips throughout the interview process, just to keep in mind. First impressions, like we mentioned verbally for that, tell me about yourself, but also your first impression when you're on Zoom for the first time. You're making a first impression of them as well. Um, but if this is in person, your handshake, um, having a confident, firm handshake while making eye contact and smiling is very, very important. Your confidence can also be shown very, very quickly in your first impression. Body language, eye contact. Eye contact on Zoom can be really challenging. Best tip I have for that is on Zoom, I'm not sure if there's other platforms, I know there's a lot of other platforms you can interview on, but say if it's on Zoom, if you don't know, you can actually minimize the screen so that it's not full screen. And then you can hide your self view if you want. So over, if you hover over your own video, you can right click or there's little dots to hide self view. Sometimes watching yourself can be really distracting. I would make sure at some point, you know what you look like so that you know you have a little bit of space over and you know what your background looks like. Make sure you do know what you look like, but don't stare at yourself. So what you can do is hide self view and then make it so that um, the box where say Brittany or whoever your interviewer is, you can move it to be right underneath the camera. So on my laptop, my camera is in the center on the top, right above my screen. If I manipulate her video and put it right underneath and I'm looking right here, it could look like I'm making eye contact, I'm sure. But I'm actually looking half an inch below the camera. So you can make it look like you're looking at them 
but you're really still looking at the person's face. And I know I always look to the right because I like to see faces. Um, so during an interview, I would make sure I shift this over. I have you guys to the right because my screen is um, shared right now with the PowerPoint, but for an interview, that's what I would recommend. Um, but just like in person on Zoom, it would be really weird if you made eye contact the entire interview, right? Have you ever had a conversation with somebody where they never broke eye contact? It's kind of weird. Uh, so I would aim in person for 80, 85% of the time maintaining eye contact. So maybe your trick is in your brain, challenge yourself for a whole answer or two sentences of your whole answer, maintain eye contact that whole time. And then maybe for the next part of your answer, you turn over to the next interviewer and you're focusing on them. But it's okay and normal to break. You're not a robot, right? Don't stare at them the entire time. It's strange. Um, so same, same idea goes for Zoom. Fidgeting and gestures. So for me, I know a nervous habit of mine is if I'm in a wheelie chair, you know, the swivelly one, I'm going to be rotating back and forth. It's really distracting on Zoom to constantly have that movement. For me too, another bad habit of mine, and again, this is self-awareness, is I'm Italian and I talk with my hands a lot. You may have noticed, right? On Zoom, I've gotten feedback of I'm using my hands too much and it can be really aggressive on Zoom, right? Because you can't see the rest of my body. In person, it's not as bad. But on Zoom, I make it an effort. If I'm doing an interview, I'll sit on one hand. That way I literally can only use one hand and I'm very aware of it. Or maybe I'll do my hand gestures near my lap so that nobody would see it, but I'm still getting that nervous habit out, right? but they can't see it. So just being aware of all of that. Filler words, so that's saying things like, like, um, you know, be very aware of these. We all do them in some way, shape or form, just being aware of them. And the more you prepare for an interview, the less filler words you're going to have. Being on at all times. I have had a horror story where even in the parking lot before they were even in the building for the interview, there was an aggressive parking war between a candidate and an interviewer where somebody cut somebody off and stole a parking spot and then ran in, ended up being the same person they were interviewing with. I have also had positive stories of somebody being really, really nice to the receptionist and having a good conversation, even a janitor. I remember one student of mine, they were in Manhattan for an interview and asked the, the front desk attendant you know, where their interview was on the 15th floor or whatever. And um, they helped them and they were so nervous. It was their first time in the city, helped them get up to the right floor and whatnot, all that. Okay. Fast forward to when they're actually doing the internship, they go back to the building and then see the same doorman and say, thank you so much. You know, it was so helpful. You know, you helped ease my nerves or whatever when we were talking in the elevator, helping me get, you know, navigate. And he had said, no problem. I actually put in a good word for you. They always like to ask the, the interviewers, Ask how the candidates treat the receptionist, how they treat the help desk or whomever is helping them out. So you are on and you are being assessed the moment you step on the property, really. Um, so being aware of that. Um, no gum or beverages. I know some people may have bad habit with gum, really try to refrain from it. Again, it can be really distracting. Um, beverages on Zoom, it's okay to have a water. Um, Make sure it is in like a professional, simple glass, nothing that's, you know, an alcoholic beverage, um, glassware. We don't want any of that. Keep it simple and professional. Um, enthusiasm, confidence, and authenticity. You can be super qualified for a job and match every single qualification. But if you're not excited about it, or you don't smile, or you don't show genuine enthusiasm, for the company and for meeting other people and drive to learn, they may not want you to join the company, right? Or for my job, it's a lot of trust in me representing Virginia Tech, right? It's a lot of trust in, um, you know, people can know the ins and outs of resumes, but building an authentic connection with students um, or with people on Zoom, um, that's that authenticity piece that's gonna be harder to assess. And being yourself, being authentic in an interview, even over Zoom, which can be uncomfortable, it gets better with time, but allowing yourself to be that authentic version of yourself, you're also going to find a good fit with the company, right? If you're not yourself and you're putting on this facade or, you know, being somebody who you think they may want to hire instead of being yourself, um, you're not going to be happy in that company once you're there, right? So that's one thing I tell students too. There is a book called, um, Can I Wear My Nose Ring to the Interview? 
And it caught my attention when I sat on a career advisor's bookshelf. I'm like, interesting. And it's actually just a whole interviewing tips book, but that's a great way to capture my attention, right? Can I wear my nose ring to the interview? Can I show my tattoo in an interview? Do I need to dye my hair when I have naturally, like not naturally, but I have dyed blue hair. Should I, you know, fix that and make it look more professional or whatever it may be? Any of those questions, I say, I want you to be your professional self. How are you going to show up for yourself at that internship every day in the summer? That's who they want to meet in the interview. And I want you to be comfortable, right? Again, don't put on a fake facade for an interview just to get the job. I want you to be comfortable and be accepted for who you are at that company. All right. And then the last piece here, listen carefully to the questions asked. Sometimes you can be so nervous and thinking about so many things and, you know, my Zoom background, my, my internet, all the things that you're not present and you're not listening to the question being asked. And it can be really annoying on the other side of the table to have to repeat questions constantly, right? If you really can't understand a question, and I can share an embarrassing story here, if you can't understand a question or they're saying a word you just don't know, um, ask to rephrase it instead of repeating it. Repeating may sound like you just weren't listening or you weren't paying attention. Rephrasing, when you're asking that politely, would you mind rephrasing that question? Or sometimes if it is a challenging or kind of multi-part question, if you rephrase it back to them, I just wanna make sure um, what I'm hearing you're asking is this, this, and this, is that, is that right? Um, this is how I'm gonna answer that. Don't do that for every question, but if there's a, a difficult one that you're trying to understand, it can be helpful to re repeat it back to them to make sure you're on the same understanding rather than halfway through the answer. And they're like, that's not what we asked. <laughs> so my embarrassing story is my first job as a career advisor interviewing. I was a student employee at UConn, University of Connecticut, where I went to undergraduate. And I was interviewing to be a peer career advisor or a career intern at their office. Um, I thought it'd be a fun on-campus job. I was a journalism major and wanted to review my peers' resumes. I thought that would be fun. I had no idea it was going to change my entire career path, but that was the interview. And we'll never forget, the interview was Mike, um, Mike Petro, and he asked me, how do you handle ambiguous situations? I was so nervous, I forgot the definition of ambigu ambiguity. And I was so flabbergasted. I had to ask him, like, do you mind rephrasing that question? And then thankfully he saved me and he rephrased it as, you know, a situation where you don't have clear directions. Maybe I give you an assignment for this internship and I don't really give you clear direction or guidelines. How do you, how would you handle that? Thank goodness he rephrased it for me, right? Because I just totally blanked on that word. It's like, I've never heard that word before. And I told him after I got the job, I'm like, you know, Mike, during that interview, I just completely blanked on that whole word. So he always found it funny, but rephrasing can really help you. All right. I know that we only have a few minutes left and I wanna be respectful of your time. So these are some common questions that are asked strengths and weaknesses, some things about diversity, especially applying to school, skills-based we talked about, career goals. So being prepared to talk about maybe where do you see yourself in a few years and how does this internship or this job kind of fit into that or this program you're applying to? What sets you apart? And I prepared way too much for 45 minutes and you guys asked good questions and engaged a lot. So we just didn't have time, but um, Brittany and her team has these slides so you can go through it. And I would recommend, um, I don't know if you can make these accessible to them or if it's part of any drive or folder so they can go through some of these questions. So these are some good common questions. Tell me about a time that you failed at something. Tell me about a time you made a mistake. Um, tell me about a time you went above and beyond what was expected of you. And this is one important one I wanna take a moment to explain. It's the STAR method. This is a good formula on how to answer, um, how to answer a behavioral question, right? So those ones we were just saying, Tommy went above and beyond what was required of you. This is breaking it down of a good story, situation, task, action, result. It's kind of a roadmap of an acronym. Situation and task kind of give you some context of the story. When I was in this internship at UConn, I was doing this, this, and this, right? Situation task on a particular day my supervisor was out sick and thought I was asked to do this this and this action steps what were the actual action steps that you took specifically I want to hear I statements in here not a lot of we as a team right no I want to know what you did this is going to be more skills based and then results what happened at the end of the day did you get an A on the project what did you learn from that situation how does this relate to this job and then questions that you should be asking at the end of an interview. This is really gonna be important. I think somebody earlier mentioned, it can really show how much preparation you've done 
of research on the company, this is a part where that really can shine through. What that question says about you as a candidate, what you're interested in, what you care about, what qualities you care about in an employer, but also what that answer will provide you, right? So asking good questions at the end of an interview, what, um, you know, what type of company are you gonna be walking into, right? And then researching, um, making sure that you have um, all of that information before you're preparing a question. So that can be really helpful to understand more. Maybe there's a follow-up question about something was vague in the job description and you want to learn more about it. You can certainly ask them about next steps, what their hiring timeline is, um, professional development opportunities, history of that job, but do not ask about salary, money, vacation, any type of benefits, controversial topics, right? And then following up just really quickly, reflecting on your interview process. Um, how do you think you did? Were there any tough questions? Write down all your questions that you can remember. You're probably not gonna remember every single question asked to be, but try to jot down some notes right away. And then drafting a thank you email. Don't send it right away. I recommend you sit on it for a few hours and then send it either at the end of the day. So if it was an 8 a.m. interview, you can send your thank you notes at 3 p.m. If it was a 3 p.m. interview, I would schedule them to send out at 8 a.m. the next morning within 24 hours, I would recommend, definitely before 48 hours. And that should be individualized and personalized to each interviewer. So if I'm interviewing with you, Sarah and Brittany and Mary, I'm gonna want to send separate individual thank you emails to each of them. And then following up, so maybe you interviewed with somebody and they said they'd get back to you in a week and it's been two weeks, I would recommend you follow up and re reiterate your interest in the role. If they didn't give you a timeline and maybe you did an intro interview um, and it's been two weeks of nothing, I would recommend it, the two week mark of quiet. That's when you should reach back out. All right. I went over three minutes and I'm so sorry. Any last questions? And yes, I can share my LinkedIn. I have a personalized LinkedIn. Really easy to do. That's my LinkedIn URL. And if you don't know how to customize your URL, I can show you in two seconds. Please feel free to connect with me. When you do connect with me, make sure you write a customized message, which you should do with any professional connection. Don't let it just do an automated message. Say, hi, Alyssa. It was so nice to meet you today at the Tech Girls presentation. Thanks so much. It was great. Or I learned so much. Whatever you want to say. Uh, you don't have to compliment or anything. I was only teasing. But I met you at this Tech Girls conference. Thanks for the presentation. I would love to stay connected with you. I would recommend you do that for anybody else in here that you are meeting throughout the conference. And I hope you all have a lovely rest of your conference. It was so, so great to meet you all. And thank you for your engagement and your questions, especially on a Saturday morning. I thought this was a great conversation with everybody and it was so nice to meet you all. And I hope you learned a few new things about preparing for your next or your first interview. I just want to say thank you, Elisa. I do interviews and I think I just learned a ton of things from you about just being more prepared to even do interviews. So thank you so much. And Wonderful. thank you for joining us on your birthday weekend celebration <laughs> as well. That shows a lot that you showed up. Thank you. Oh, of course, of course. Uh, thank you all so much. Thank you for the invitation. And I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your conference. Um, and connect with me on LinkedIn, Mary and Brittany as well. I would love to stay connected. This was a lot of fun. Um, and I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Great. Thank you so much, Bye. Alyssa. It was great Thank to you. meet you. Take care.